the kind of the focus on the panel I wanted, or at least the podcast I call on the panel, uh, is writing for Giant Monsters, because we have two men who wrote for Giant Monsters on this panel. So we're going to start off with that. Gentlemen, get inside the mind of a giant monster, putting pen to paper. Um, the way in Rulers that we approached monsters was like, really wanted to have sort of like, like a level of realism, mm -hmm. like an animal, like the way an animal would think. So we you know, tried to do a lot of uh, like reaction type things, like if something you know, jumped out of the water, like how would an animal react to that like defensively or just run away. So there's instances where we do have monsters that sort of run away, you know, Zilla being one of those, because that's what that thing does the best, I guess. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, just pretty much approach it like that. You know, some buildings and military equipment in there. Watching the charge. Yeah. yeah. Um, I approach it by putting yourself into the mind of the monster, which is quite easy to do. You just have to imagine two hours from now when you're walking the hall and you get stuck in a big mass of people and you can't move. And you draw from the instinct of what you would really like to do, and now you're going to have That's the way. Now, on that note, uh, what is your particular favorite monster trait? Favorite trait? Yeah, yeah. Like, do you, do you prefer big on the Do you prefer just a you know, style Do you? Um, I prefer, uh, actually, I don't have a, a uh, complete favorite. I like smashing, uh, which is, I think, the the guttural response of, of uh, not just with a monster's arms, but its tails and its entire body. In fact, I think body slamming a building is the best. Ah, <laughs> uh, I think Godzilla like just crunches through things. He body slams buildings right and left. But tooth and claw, Something I always wanted to see. I'm like, it's just this tail is massive, and that thing's swinging. It's a big part of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Kevin, how do you like to see your kaiju monsters? Well, I like the bear. seafaring monsters, except in, instead of being in the ocean, you're you're going for Earth. That's cool. That's cool. Alright, well, you know what, let's, uh, let's jump back and forth real quick. Where's the rulers of Earth just ended? Now, they, has anybody been reading the series? Yeah! Alright! Woo! <laughs> uh, so, if you haven't been reading it, shame on all of you. Know. <laughs> Jerry, you call yourself Patrick Finn. It's a fantastic series. Uh, it just ended. It's a, uh, a fantastic homage to uh, uh, Destroy All Monsters at the end, yes. including monsters that weren't in Destroy All Monsters. You got, you got a little gargantuan action in there. Absolutely. You got a little uh, Yogg monster from space mm -hmm. action in there. And you even got a Zilla in there. You you gave them a defining moment where they're like, oh, I don't feel so bad for this guy anymore. You no, know, we put a line in the book. Uh, we kind of established a you know, like Monster Island, but there was a, a chain of islands. Monster Islands, and, um, and we put like a little joke in the book where you know, Zilla was always cruising around, but like, just right outside in the water, and it was sort of like, uh, like transient. Yeah, it's like I wonder if they'll ever let him on there. <laughs> you know, like if they'll ever be officially allowed on the island, kind of thing. And that's really just because you know fans are really hesitant to accept that. You know, unfortunately, that monster is canon now yeah. and, and, and part of the the lore. Um, but it was a lot of fun actually, like taking a look at it, you know, the way that the design is. It's, it's actually, it's not a bad design. If it was anything but the name that they gave it, it would have worked. Yeah, it was just called Monster. <laughs> yeah. Now you actually brought Brazil. Uh, yes, I did. So, uh, any that you, I mean, you wrote the, uh, you wrote that episode before the movie came out. No, actually, the the series started um, after the movie came out, mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
you know, for me it was like on my bucket list, right? As a kid, I watched uh, all the Godzilla movies. In fact, I actually got to go to a couple of premieres in Japan for Godzilla, which is really cool. Uh, but the, which one? Um, I, the biggest one was uh, in 1992. Was it Yeah. And my brother lived in, in Japan. So uh, when I got the opportunity, I was actually at the time I was writing for Star Trek Voyager, and I was like, uh, I'm gonna definitely jump on this. But the thing that always bugged me about Americans' approach to Godzilla is one, wrong name, two, it's never in Japan. Yeah. And so uh, I said I would do it as long as I could do an episode in Japan and I could call him Godzilla instead of Godzilla. And they agreed to that. Uh, and then I got to pretty much go crazy. So putting in a giant Yeti, make him a robot, uh, put a giant snake, spits, spits white gooey stuff. I got a comment on that. <laughs> I'll just say that every director fought to do that episode, not because of, I wrote it so well. This is the, in many ways, your, your episodes kind of uh, very King Kong escapes. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much you had both Kong, Mechanic Kong and uh, Amanda or something. Yeah, kind of. I mean, uh, the, the mix of, I think I was mixing up Godzilla and uh, some of my favorite uh, Godzilla episodes. So, for King Kong meets Godzilla. So, what I want to know is, how did you guys come up get into giant monsters. Well, talking to you on the phone earlier, Harry, you were like, oh, I love giant monsters and robots and all that stuff. And I was like, that's amazing. But I wanted to always know, how did you guys get into it? Well, I, I think it has to do with, well, for me, starting off with a little kid, right? So it's the perspective of uh, you're, you're small and everyone's big. And the idea of being bigger than everybody else is, is great. Um, so that's my first inspiration and, and the, the drive of it. But I think as an adult, there's even a, I think there's a, a resurgence. And I think part of the reason is, is, well, there's a couple. One is everyone has seen so much material. You know, every, everyone has seen so many superheroes and monsters and things. And so we want bigger and better. And the only way to get that is giant robots and giant monsters. Chris? Uh, being a kid and uh, 
Godzilla vs. Uh, Megalon was on TV. And, uh, John, John Belushi dressed as Godzilla. <laughs> I remember that pretty clearly. Um, so it, it was around that time that, that I was getting into monsters. They were playing, you know, they were playing on TV in the afternoons and stuff too. So it was it was either that or either there was you know some Godzilla movie playing um, on some Saturday afternoon. Now you wrote Cataclysm. Can you give, has anybody ever read Cataclysm? All right. Can you give us a little insight to your book, sir? Uh, well, uh, Godzilla Cataclysm was a, it's a five issue miniseries that I did. It has been collected in trade, and you can get it at the IBW booth at the convention. Um, uh, it is a, it's basically, I wanted to take one of the stories like uh, Destroy All Monsters or Godzilla Final Wars and, and look at what would happen to the world after an event like that, what the world would look like. So uh, Godzilla Cataclysm is is really the story of there has been a you know an event where the monsters just went wild and just ravaged the world. And uh, this is the story of humanity trying to rebuild itself in the uh, in the what you know in the aftermath of that event ten years later. And they kind of view the monsters as as uh, Almost as gods, uh, they disappear, and uh, but the you know humanity's still praying to them. They're still uh, they're they're praying to them. They're still living in dread of the day they return. And this miniseries is about when they return. It has a little uh, a little bit of uh, Walking Dead, with a little bit of Attack of the Titan kind of mythos too. I don't know either of those things. Wow, <laughs> that was the most honest uh, answer I've ever had. Yeah. And she was like, Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like it. So, of course, we're going to talk about, obviously, the future of kaiju films. And so, before I get your thoughts on what, you know, what you guys will think about Pacific Rim 2 and Godzilla 2 and the Toho movie, uh, I want to know, why do you guys think all of a sudden there's a reemergence of popularity of kaiju films here in America? I, I think it's, like, everything just goes in cycles. And it's something that's been around, it's obviously inspired all of us. Um, but you could almost look back and go, okay, for a while it was, everything was monkeys, and it was pirates, and it was like vampires, and then zombies, and it's like, it's about time like giant monsters and giant robots, you know, had that coming. Yeah, I think, I think maybe, you know, part of it could be that, that the people who are bringing these things out, you know, in, in America, especially, are like us, they grew up loving them, and it's just, uh, it's just now's the time that they've been able to bring them, you know, bring them, do something with them in, in a big way. And it, all it takes is one to be a success, and then it's a trend. I agree with those, but I also think it's because they can finally be executed in a good way. Um, so <laughs> it's in terms of, of, of being able to really uh, you move away from the guy in the big suit, which of course I love as a kid, but I really don't want to see now, um, to uh, the reality of it. But also, I think VR is going to drive it even bigger. Because how much fun is it going to be now to climb into the giant robot, but do it for real? In the same way that I might write it in a screenplay, everybody in the audience will actually be able to do it. They'll be able to feel like they're in a giant robot and move around. So I think, uh, I think not only is it going to grow, but I think VR will be a big push uh, for much more of the genre. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your hopes for the Pacific Rim 2 movie and the Godzilla 2 movie and the Toho one? Um, I guess just you know keep doing what we did. You know, don't try to mix things up too much or you know try to try to appeal for an audience that you don't need to, but that, I think, you know, you already have fans established that are going to see it, so why, you know, try to, you know, keep up with the Jones, you know, whatever some other group is doing. Yeah, I, I, I agree, I kind of, you know, the one thing, and I know very little about these movies except that they're being made, so I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not wrong cop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the one thing I'd say is, that, you know, like, especially like the Godzilla movie, you know, when you get into the movies, especially when you think about superhero movies, for instance, there's a trap of the next one has to have, you know, a dozen villains to fight, and you kind of lose focus. 
and, and I just don't want it to be something where instead of uh, you know you've got you know Godzilla and you know I don't know Mothra whoever is going to be in the next movie I don't know but I don't want it to be like you know Mothra and ten other monsters a couple spot a couple of you know I can work with a couple but uh, I just don't want them to try to uh, go too far off of what you know what worked uh, and yeah I don't the specific gram I don't even know what how are they going to tell another story <laughs> what's, what's, I mean I guess we're on time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually going to be a giant uh, wrestling smackdown for a specific room too. It just it turns out you go through that little little universe and they actually just pull they pull the square big WWF. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's, it's set it's set during Comic Con and, <laughs> and the crowd just becomes a fleshy monster that just gets in your way. And boom, and boom. I think Stan Lee's writing it. <laughs> So, no, I, I, I'm looking forward um, to all those movies, actually. My hope is that, one, they definitely don't go to this Batman uh, route where that's just throw as many, or even the Spider-Man movie as well. You don't need a whole bunch of monsters, just make a more interesting one. And also, for Pacific Rim, I do like the fact that you have both angles. You have the human drama angle. And so, what I, I hope is that they, they come up and realize that just because it's big monsters, doesn't mean it doesn't have to have, um, or it can't have, real drama and real story. I mean, the, it should harken back to the original Godzilla movie, in, in my heart, which has to do about talking about real things. And they talk in Godzilla movies because you couldn't tell that story. And so they came up with, with a, a platform where you could. And I think you could do that in these movies as well. I think there's, there's real things you can talk about, but of course still have kick-ass fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, at least with Pacific Rim, I'd like to see more shots of the monster itself rather than like having it get blocked by uh, buildings or building. Are you saying they cheat the penalty effects? Maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, I forgot the rest of the question. <laughs> I told you. Oh. I knew um, oh, okay. I didn't know they were making another one. Yeah, I didn't know you know. You know who's making it? I was, like, I was satisfied with the first one. <laughs> Just uh, keep on doing what you're doing. I got a question for everyone. Okay, you're all here because you like this stuff. What, clap your hands if it's Godzilla, Scott, the old Godzilla, the old Godzilla got you started. I want to know if Civic Rim is what got you into this. Okay, miscellaneous. I really hope, as much as I love all of the 
total cast. I, I kind of really hope that they just go with an original creation. Is that what you would do? Or is that you I mean, I'd like to see that, yeah. Just to, just to you know, we had the Mutos, you know, and just to kind of keep everything separate. You know, this is sort of like this universe of, you know, not to make it like this is an American thing, this Japanese thing, but just to make it more like this is our style of Godzilla. I think a, a new original monster would be kind of fun, but something very similar to, you know, like Pedora, Smog Monster, something with a message that kind of drives the rest of the story. Like, you know, this monster was created through one thing, and one other thing that can save us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would, as much as I don't want to see a lot of monsters, I wouldn't mind something new. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Something new, and maybe, you know, one or two, uh, you know, one or two, play. and I don't want them in the movie for a long time either. I mean, I, I think you could have a, a throwback to, to Mothra and just have Godzilla just kill it, because you are her, whatever Mothra is, because she, she's terrible. <laughs> and I'm just, uh, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I love, yeah. I, I love Mothra, just like the rest of you. Uh, no, I wouldn't mind seeing, you know, maybe something new. Um, I, you know, my bad fear is it's going to become like a team-up movie where all the monsters, you know, you know get together and high-five. And all the Marvel, the, Marvel, uh, the Marvel Universe movie stuff. Yeah, and, and I, I think that worked in the 70s. I think it was fun, but I don't think it works in the tone of this movie. I mean, uh, of the, the, what they, they, set us, you know, they set up this last time. I'd also like to see Godzilla get inside the giant robot. He's <laughs> <laughs> like at the end, that's the big twist. The, the, the scientists have built from a bigger robot to take on the other one. So they're out there and suddenly it's gigantic. <laughs> Here's Godzilla mounting it. That's what I want to see. It's obviously built by the Russians. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see one where uh, humans are on the offensive rather than the defensive. Uh, yeah. Wow, you shot the defensive too close. I'm sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, going down the line, I ask this of every guest. I want to know favorite monster and favorite movie. It doesn't even have to be Godzilla. I want to know your favorite giant in the genre. I want to know what your favorite is. So, second favorite? Okay, yeah, yeah. Godzilla. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely King Kong, the arcade of 33 Kong. Um, your guys never seen the original King Kong? Yeah, I've seen some of them now, hot dead. not even look at your homework. You get on the time. Just go home, go on Netflix, and then watch comments. You can get on the DVD section. He's awesome. He looks like the Bumble from Yeah, we're going through it. I like how you said 33 Kong. And you were like, we have to specify. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one wants to sit through three more hours. I mean, there's, there's the 76 dealer rent is fine, which mm -hmm. is. Really. It's interesting. Yeah, it's a big 50 foot tall robotic gorilla for about five seconds. Yeah, the shot. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, favorite movie, easily Destroy Monsters. It's just got everything in it, and it's actually fairly quick. You, can, you just want to sit down for an afternoon and you know, not do something for like seven, <laughs> 70 minutes or so, throw that on, and you will be highly entertained. It was the Avengers film before there was an Avengers Yeah. Film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, it, it changes for me. If you ask me tomorrow, I'm going to say something different. So today I'm going to say that my favorite monster is Legion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that I, and, and the reason I say that is I was, you know, I hadn't seen a giant monster movie, you know, a new giant monster movie in years. And then, you know, I saw you know, Gamma vs. Legion and I was just amazed that they were able to uh, create this creature and work the way it worked. So, so maybe even that might be my favorite. And as far as Giant Monster, that's probably my favorite is Gamma vs. Legion. Although uh, I have fond memories of uh, Godzilla on Monster Island. Uh, my dad took me to see a double feature back in the day when they had double features in movies. And, and we saw Godzilla on Monster Island. And, uh, and I, it might have been, it was one of the others right around that, that era that we saw. That one was one I remember. And I, I just have fond memories of it because I was watching it with my dad. Which, by the way, uh, it is Gamma's 15th anniversary this year. Which apparently the two has no luster for it. It's just like, yeah, okay. 
But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that because not only uh, is Cameron Two a, a phenomenal film, but the special effects director, Shinji Gucci, who was making the Attack on Titan films, is also the special effects director for the upcoming Coho film, too. So, there you go. For, for a movie with guys in costumes, mm -hmm. I mean, they do some stuff in that movie that I think are just. I mean, there's a scene where Cameron lands and he's sliding, yes. he's shooting fireballs as he slides across the room. And it gave me chills the first time I saw it. It's, it's just very good. It's awesome. Phenomenal. Sure. Well, well, since I can't do King Kong now or Godzilla, I'm going to go with all the monsters in the Ultraman series because oh, they okay. are so bad and crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of these things at home and I look at them and I'm going like, wow, what sort of gross are those guys on there? And where do I get them? Because they are monsters. I know, each week, and that's why it's great. So basically, I want to see a movie with all of them now, and then uh, Godzilla shows up with the event. They just kind of <laughs> smash that. Did you ever see the uh, Ultraman episode with Jerry? Yes. The, the big, the Godzilla suit with the giant throw on it. That was the first Godzilla, or first Ultraman episode I thought, I ever saw one of the gentlemen. I thought he was fighting Godzilla. I know. Oh, Godzilla's on this. But yeah, it's literally at one point he rips the throw off, and he's let like a Matador like going forward and forward with this older top thrill and having a monster charge him, so. Exactly, and, and, and I mean, and the fact is that as a kid you could just always hold up a pen and then you became Ultraman, so. Unless you're Ultra 7, you put on some sunglasses. Oh, that's true. David first, so. Sir? Uh, favorite one would be uh, Dino Tank. Nice. It's a dinosaur and a tank together. You can't get any Yeah. That's so <laughs> and uh, what, uh, uh, what's your favorite one? Uh, I've never seen that many. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, I'm, I'm you, giving, you represent I'm, the ultimate. Yes, you do represent the ultimate here. Uh, in that case, it's probably the ultimate zero. Uh, pretty good. And a space pirate Yeah. <laughs> space pirate people! And a giant claw that encapsulates, that's made out of monsters that encapsulates an entire planet. What way? It is insane. The, uh, the Super Riot films, again, as they said, it's, yeah, they're on something over there. But they're wonderful, <laughs> though. If you ever get a chance, go find Ultra Galaxy of the film. That is pretty much like the Ultraman Avengers. only have every single Ultraman in that film. And it is just completely. Bonkers. You know, I take it back. I'm gonna change it back. Okay. Okay. In the original, in the Marvel Godzilla series, uh -huh. there was a creature called the Hand of Doom, mm -hmm. and it was a hand, and each finger was a dragon head, and the fingers would shoot off like rockets and fly around and fight Godzilla. And I, I love that monster. I love that. But you know what? That was in Shogun Warriors at the time. Not even in Godzilla. Actually, no, because they made a out of that. Did they? Well, it was in the Shogun Warrior comic. Which was but, done by Bertrand. Yeah, if you haven't checked out those comics, yeah, if you haven't checked out those comics, they're worth reading because we talk, we, we oh, joke, yeah. as much as we joke about the Avengers and Godzilla, the Avengers fight Godzilla in these comics. Yeah, so, uh, not only that, Black Widow, Angel, Iceman, Hercules fight Godzilla, then the Fantastic Four fight Godzilla at one point, then he teams up with Devil Dinosaur when he yeah. travels to an open dimension. The thing that punches Godzilla into a sh tank full of sharks. <laughs> <laughs> and Godzilla fights. He yells Clark, Tom punches them, and then Reed's like, you gotta go back in there and get him. He's like, it just thinks, like, Ben's just like, oh, my Reed, come on. <laughs> so it goes in and tosses him out, and he's, his butt's getting bit by a shark as he's hopping back out. It is it's awesome. Rifle. He fights a rat at one point, because Hank then yeah. shrinks him down yeah, to the size of the rat. And then there's one point where Godzilla's wearing a trench coat and a top hat. Walking around like a small Asian kid on the streets of New York. <laughs> they are delightful. Oh my god. And go, when you go back in, you'll find a comic dealer. I'm pretty sure they got the trade somewhere in there. Fine, they're so good. The Shogun Warrior stuff too is awesome. Alright, we're going to take a, a second. I have a video to show everyone. Um, it is a, a compilation of stuff for an upcoming documentary for a friend of ours uh, uh, named Mark Amio. He's in G Fest right now. He's going to be here with us. So he asked me to pass this along. We're going to see about seven minutes. It's a clip of independent kaiju films. He's been kind of a master for the last year and making a movie about him. So you're going to see a few things. Um, just he yeah, had request. Just please don't shoot anything on here because there's like two things we can't get out to the public at this moment. So. So it's called Kaiju Gaiden, and it's a documentary about kind of rare and never before seen kaiju films. So you guys are going to be seeing something very different. 
not, and not a ton of people have ever got to see this either. So, sir.
CGI, for sure. <laughs> the other people that take more drugs. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to start. Um, does anybody have a few questions? For yeah, we actually have a couple. We have, like, we have like one, one question or two questions. Sense of uh, guilt over things he may or may not have had control over. 
and uh, and I think it, you know, I think it's getting it's getting readers to buy in on an emotional level in order to, to accept you know to accept all those other crazy things. Yeah, I think one you start with what genre are you actually going to be doing? So do you want it to be popcorn? Do you want it to be campy? Do you want it to be seriously dramatic? And just realize that the big monster is either a threat or it's something to play on. So for instance, uh, I think it would be fun actually to do uh, Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Adventure meets Godzilla. <laughs> and I do mean that in a serious way. I like, do a funny one where it's like, what would happen if these two guys are totally stoned and everyone's left the city and giant monsters are right around just because they're all stupid and they end up saving the world. See, but that's, I started with that premise and I built everything into that. Like, and you, these guys would probably go crazy with that. <laughs> All right, well, we got to wrap it up. Um, real quick, uh, we passed out. Uh, did everybody get buttons in the postcard? Maybe you didn't get one, come find us. We, we have more back there. But if anybody got a red button, I have a special giveaway for you guys. <clears throat> yeah, all right, pull we'll out. And, and I'd, I'd like to invite everyone to my Sunday panel uh, with the Sneak Museum, uh, Who's the Muse? Uh, which is science or science fiction. All right, on that, on that note, gentlemen, chill away before we close up. Where can we find you online? And first, Kevin, we know you're going to be on the floor somewhere. But where can we find you, Chris? We're going to come down this way. Uh, well, I should be at the IDW booth uh, all day tomorrow, but also today from 6 to 7. Go pick up Rulers of Earth. They have it there. It's and fantastic. Cataclysm. And Cataclysm. Go get it. Go get it. You on Twitter? Yes. Yes. Uh, at Mallory Chris, I think. I'm horrible social media, but really. Autograph. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, you can find me uh, at you know, uh, tellandbone.com or at tellandbone on Twitter. Uh, I don't know where I am the rest of the day. I just barely made it here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm on Twitter uh, at, at Harry Doc, Floor, D-O-C, or on Instagram at Floor, I-T, Floor. And um, again, got the panel tomorrow. I think it's from 3 to 4 means four people will show up, uh, but it should be fun. And Jessica, as always, where can they find more of our work? I was actually going to say, Kevin, do you have a Twitter? We should start hashtagging, yeah, hashtag yeah. Kevin did great, yeah. you know? Kaiju Kingdom podcast. Thank you, Comic Con. That is it for the Kaiju Kingdom podcast.